Hi there, and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend. Time is running out on summer 2023, but don't call game over just yet because there's still the potential for some hot weather, at least some warm weather over the next 10 days. Weather patterns have changed since the last six weeks brought so many areas of low pressure, brought the jet stream to the south of the UK so consistently. At the time of recording, the jet stream is to the north of the UK now, and we've got high pressure in place. Not something we've been able to talk about much recently, not since June anyway. However, looking out to the west, there is a branch of the jet stream that is fast approaching later Thursday and into Friday. And there's an area of low pressure also to the west. This low and this high will orientate themselves so that we'll waft in some warmer air from the south. But at the same time, it's turning more humid, it's turning cloudier, and there's an increased instability in the atmosphere as the jet stream picks up another area of low pressure and sends that towards the UK for the start of Friday. Ahead of that low, actually, we've got a plume of warmth, humidity and instability moving up from the continent. And so at dawn on Friday, after a mostly fine day on Thursday, a lot of cloud in the sky, some low cloud covering central and eastern parts of the UK, and that instability manifesting itself in a line of showers or even some thunderstorms coming from relatively high based cloud, but nevertheless, could be some heavy downpours moving up through central parts of the UK. Some uncertainty on the distribution of this during Friday morning. Eventually, as it pushes northeastwards, it's going to diminish, but don't be surprised if you see some showery rain at times, even some rumbles of thunder during Friday itself. Where we get some breaks in the cloud, it will still be a fairly warm day, but the temperature's not exceptional, although we've got increased humidity and the potential for high temperatures on Friday because of the southerly airflow. I think there'll be a lot of cloud. There'll be a strong wind as well in places. That's something worth taking note because across the north and northwest of Wales, there's a wind warning in force. As the winds bump over the hills of Wales, we're likely to see some strong gusts, 50, 55 even 60 miles an hour, so that could cause some impacts to travel and to tourism during a busy time of year. Nevertheless, where we do get some breaks in the cloud, temperatures still a little above average for the time of year. Then the main event arrives later Friday. Friday evening brings some heavy and widespread rainfall from the southwest towards the northeast of the UK. And that rain is likely to be thundery in places, particularly across central and eastern parts. In fact, Here's a summary graphic of the main risk areas. These aren't the only areas that will see some heavy rain. Much of the UK will experience a spell of heavy rain as this system moves southwest to northeast across the country. But these are the main risk areas. On Friday night into Saturday early hours, central, eastern and southern England, risk of thundery rain, frequent lightning, hail, 50 to 80 millimetres of rain in places, depending on how thundery showers evolve through the night. Not everyone in this area, of course, will be affected by the worst of the impacts from this. It's just the main zone where those risks are greatest. Likewise, parts of Northern Ireland, parts of Scotland as well, where we've got southeasterly winds and some heavy and persistent rain through the night could see 20 to 50 millimetres in just a few hours, especially over the hills in these areas. That's mostly through Friday night and into the start of Saturday, but the rain band moves up north into the north of Scotland and there's continued persistent outbreaks of rain during Saturday afternoon across some other northern and western parts of Scotland. Elsewhere, as that band of rain moves through for the start of Saturday, it's a mixture of sunny spells and showers. There'll be some heavy downpours in places, particularly towards the north and west of the country. The driest and brightest weather will be towards the southeast. And with a moist southwesterly airflow, although we're in slightly less humid air, it's not going to be significantly cooler. In fact, given some increased sunshine there in the southeast, we'll still potentially manage 26 or even on Sunday, 27 Celsius. But Sunday's very similar, spot the difference, really. A mixture of sunny spells and showers, we lose the persistent rain from the north of Scotland. But otherwise, for many places, it's a weekend of heavy downpours, yes, but also some sunny spells coming through. And with this southwesterly airflow, where we do get some sunshine, it will feel pleasantly warm with some humidity still remaining in the atmosphere. Then things get really quite interesting 
later in the weekend and the start of next week. Here's how things are looking at the end of the weekend. Low pressure to the northwest of the UK, higher pressure towards the south, and that's why we've got uh, predominantly showery conditions towards the northwest, drier towards the southeast. Here's the jet stream, though, meanwhile, to the west of the UK, diving south, becoming more wriggly, becoming more amplified, and as this happens, it picks up this area of low pressure. And what you can see is the jet stream becoming really quite loopy for Monday in this run of the Met Office global model. Now, when this happens, we're likely to see warm air across the continent push north during the start of next week, whilst low pressure to the northwest of Scotland maintains cooler and more showery conditions to the northwest. And if we just skip forward a couple of days to see how that evolves in the European model, then what you can see is still that low pressure to the northwest of Scotland bringing cooler, more changeable, sunshine and showers typically, conditions to the northwest of Scotland, to Northern Ireland, to the north of England at this stage. But this low towards the southwest with a very elongated jet stream looping around it, bringing some intense heat from the near continent. This is the uh, operational run, the high resolution run of the European model. And the colors are showing the temperature at 5,000 feet. Why are we looking at the colors and the temperatures at 5,000 feet? Well, that's because it's useful for identifying the character of the air, the air mass. It's less affected by things like hills and day-night differences uh, compared with the two meter temperatures. And that's why this is a useful graphic for showing where we've got cooler air and where we've got heat building. And the temperatures at 5,000 feet on this model run for the south of England are up at about 24, 25 Celsius. And that is pretty rare, even in the middle of summer. Uh, just to give you an idea of how much temperatures decrease as you go higher up in the atmosphere, you'd need to add on about 10 to 15 degrees to that value to get the surface temperatures, depending on, of course, how much wind and sunshine you get at the surface at the time. So 24, 25 degrees at 5,000 feet, given how much warmer it will be down at the surface, is rare and pretty unusual, pretty extreme. Now, just to show you that in a graph, this is for Eastbourne. I'm going to talk about Eastbourne for a little bit before talking about the rest of the UK. And this shows out to the next uh, 10 days or so that temperature at 5,000 feet. And there's 24 on the top there, six down at the bottom. Just to give you an idea of the average kind of temperature at 5,000 feet, it's around eight to nine degrees at this time of year. So it's well above average for the next few days into the weekend, even as slightly cooler conditions arrive. This bold line is the high-res operational run. And what you can see there is it jumps up through the start to middle of next week, up to that value of 24, 25 degrees by the middle of next week and stays elevated right up until the end of next week. That's the bold line, that's the high-res operational run. But we don't just run the computer model once, we run it 50 odd times. And all these runs are plotted on this graph as well. And they're shown here in the dotted lines. And the shaded colors here show where they're concentrated. So what they all tend to show is this upward trend out to Friday and then slightly decreasing into the weekend. And then another upward trend at the start of next week. What's, that's what the majority of these runs are showing. But the vast majority, in fact, all of them show less hot air than the operational run. And some of them take a dive later next week uh, with this shading show quite a number of them dipping to around average again. So what this essentially shows is the operational run is a bit of an outlier in terms of how hot it is, but there's a lot of spread. So there's a lot of uncertainty from the middle of next week in terms of how hot it will get. And it's not just Eastbourne, it's Manchester as well. Again, this bold line showing the potential for some hot weather for Manchester. But the majority of the computer model runs don't have it at all for Manchester. Keep things cool and changeable, average temperatures or so. That's what this shading shows. The majority of those runs are back towards average. Likewise for Glasgow, Again, the operational run a bit later this time, Thursday, Friday shows that peak up at 15, 16, 17 degrees at 5,000 feet, but the majority just plateau at closer to average. So keeping that cool, cooler at least changeable theme going through next week for Manchester, Glasgow. The potential for heat is greatest in the south, 
but there's that smaller chance that it will spread more widely north at the same time. So the main uncertainties to do with this graphic for the middle of next week are to do with how amplified the whole pattern is, how much this heat spreads north across the UK, pushing away the cooler, more changeable conditions from Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, or how much it becomes, well, stays confined to the south of England, South Wales, and so on. Also, how long it lasts. The more amplified it becomes, the more widespread it uh, pushes north the longer it will last through next week. What we can say about next week is that it's likely to stay changeable in the north, certainly through the start to middle of next week with a mix of sunny spells and showers and temperatures closer to average for the time of year. Hotter for a time in the south, that looks fairly plausible with most of those model runs staying above average, but the extreme solution, the single output from that operational run of the European model looks fairly unlikely. How far north that heat pushes and the timings of it, how quickly it pushes north or how quickly it pushes away to allow more changeable stuff to arrive from the Atlantic, that's all a little open to doubt at the moment. And just to give you an idea of that, here again is Eastbourne. Here's the extreme model run shown in uh, bold once again for the middle of next week. But 12 hours earlier, the same model output for uh, 52 different locations or 52 different model runs showed a much quicker cooling trend across all of those different runs from around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. And here's what that operational run looked in the European model low pressure to the north of Scotland, pushing that heat into the near continent. Now, if you compare this with the most recent model run, the differences on a global scale really aren't that big. It's just a difference of a few hundred miles in terms of the position of this hot air. That's all we're talking about a week ahead. But the trends are fairly clear for later next week and into the bank holiday weekend. A cooling trend across the UK, whether or not we get that hot spell in the south or elsewhere during the middle of the week and then turning more unsettled. This shows the chance of high pressure versus low pressure, where it's more likely to be high pressure for the next couple of weeks or so. You've got the red box where it's more likely to be low pressure, you've got the blue box, and this is the output from many, many different computer models. And what you can clearly see is over the next 10 days or so, the reds dominate, but then over the bank holiday weekend, we're back into the blues. It's more likely that we'll see low pressure taking over, and it's more likely that things will turn cooler and more unsettled once again. So a fair few ifs, buts, and maybes, but uh, in terms of uncertainties, it's only small differences in the position of the heat over the continent that will make a big impact in terms of how we experience the weather here in the UK.